Why did the British wear those strange helmets that looked like frying pans? If you've ever seen photos of British soldiers from the First or Second World War, you've probably noticed one curious detail. It wasn't the uniform or the weapons, but their headgear. The helmet, looking more like a frying pan or an upside down bowl, seemed awkward compared to the classic German Stahlhelm or the Soviet pot helmets. So, what was the deal? Why did the British choose such a seemingly ridiculous shape? And is it true that it once saved soldiers from a deadly rain? Let's find out. Where did the bowl on the head come from? This helmet was named after its creator, John Leopold Brody. In 1915, he proposed a steel helmet that went down in history as the Brody Helmet. Officially, in Britain, it was called the Helmet, Steel, Mark I, but in the army, Soldiers used simpler names, the bowl, the turtle, or the soup dish. The shape wasn't a designer's whim. It was built for the realities of trench warfare. Unlike modern conflicts, in World War I death usually came from above, artillery shells, shrapnel, fragments. All of this rained down on soldiers sitting in the trenches. That's why the Brody helmet had wide brims and an almost flat top. Its main protection was against fragments falling from above. Pros and cons of the Brody helmet. Its biggest advantage was ease of production. The helmet was stamped from a single piece of steel, making it cheap and easy to mass produce. The British Army managed to equip its troops with head protection faster than the Americans or even the French. Another plus was its low profile. Unlike the protruding German helmet, the Brody barely stuck out above the trench line which was a big advantage in a sniper's war. But there were downsides. The helmet offered little protection to the ears and neck. In close combat or from attacks from behind, it was far less useful. It also reflected light, making soldiers more visible. Later, this was partly fixed by adding sand to the paint for a matte finish. And what about World War II? Surprisingly, even 25 years later, the British stuck with their bowl. They slightly changed the shape and suspension system, and the Mark II helmet appeared. Later, in the 1940s, a more modern and comfortable model was designed, the so-called Turtle. But it only reached the front toward the end of the war. In the public eye, the Brody helmet remained the true symbol of the British soldier. And now the promised story. During one of the Luftwaffe raids on London, when German bombs tore through the streets, a deadly rain of stones, bricks, and glass fell on the city. Firefighters, wearing only their regular uniforms, were injured by the falling debris. Then an officer suggested issuing them Brody helmets. The result? Head injuries dropped almost by half. Even in the ruins of the city, the frying pan proved its effectiveness. Interestingly, the Brody helmet was widely copied. Its modified versions were worn by Americans, Canadians, and Australians. Even civilians, firefighters, police, and factory workers were issued similar helmets. Why? Because they were cheap and reliable. And really, what more do you need? Today, the Brody helmet is not only a museum piece but also a symbol of an entire era. A time when engineers and the military sought a balance between effectiveness, simplicity, and the harsh realities of the battlefield. It may look strange or clumsy, but it saved thousands of lives. So what would you choose? A stylish helmet or a reliable frying pan on your head? One that might one day mean the difference between life and death? What do you think? Was the Brody helmet a brilliant solution for its time or just a temporary patch compared to real combat helmets? Maybe you have your own thoughts or interesting facts about military helmets? Share them in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. Thanks for watching till the end.